On this day in 1902, telegraphic communication was established between Sitka and Juneau via submarine cable. About four years prior, the folks in Skagway thought they were getting service as well. Turns out, it was just a scam. And this week's story time with Aunt Phil, author Laurel Downing Bill, tells us about the shenanigans of Soapy Smith. Soapy, the nickname of Jefferson Randolph Smith, the man who sailed into Skagway in 1897. Yeah, a man with a plan to scam folks out of their hard-earned gold nuggets, Laurel. One of Soapy's more ingenious schemes revolved around a fake telegraph office in Skagway. Now, miners would come into the telegraph office and send word home to family and loved ones that they had made these big strikes of gold. And then, a few hours later, a message would come back, usually asking for money. And so the miners went into the telegraph office and the helpers happily took the gold to send to the families. There was a slight problem, however. The telegraph wire only extended a few feet into Skagway's Harbor. The skilled and ingenious Soapy ended up running a crew of thugs, con men, and thieves and became the undisputed king of crime in Skagway during the heyday of the gold rush. So there's no mention of soap when we're talking about Smith right now in Skagway. How did he get his nickname Soapy? Well, it was from another scam that he ran in Denver, Colorado. He took a $100 bill, put it on a bar of soap, and then put his own label on top. The product was called Sapoleon. And he would put that bar of soap in with a bunch of other soaps and go into saloons. And one of his secret silent partners would randomly select a bar of soap with the $100 bill on it. Well, of course, sales soared for Soapy. However, another bar of soap rarely appeared that had money with it. So that was in Colorado. Laurel, bring us back around. How does he end up here in Alaska? Well, law enforcement in Colorado told him that it might be better for his health if they, he left their state. So he ventured north to see what pickings were up here. His criminal enterprise stretched then along the Inside Passage, the White Pass, and the Chilkoot Trails. And then he landed in Skagway in 1897. And that's when his little schemes turned into more nefarious activities. He built a Jeff's Place. It was a saloon casino. However, few people left the casino with more money than they went in with. And those that did often found Soapy's helpers in dark back alleys, helping themselves to their gold. But his most ingenious scheme, in my opinion, was that fake telegraph office. Eventually, though, people in Skagway, they have enough of Soapy. The citizens of Skagway organized, and they wanted to have a meeting to see how they could deal with him and his gang. And they put a band by the name of Frank Reed in charge of guarding the door. Well, Soapy and his gang tried to barge in, and Frank Reed shot Soapy, and Soapy shot Reed, and as Reed crumbled to the ground, he shot Soapy one more time. Soapy died on the spot. Reed died 12 days later, and it didn't take long for Soapy's gang to skedaddle out of Skagway. A lot of people not too happy their hard-earned gold is going to Soapy Smith, but... Ooh, brilliant scheme, though. Yeah, the mm -hmm. shenanigans that probably took place, you know, during that time, <laughs> I can only imagine. Yep.